being none, we'll keep this train moving down to the city Thank auditor's you. office. Thank you, Mr. 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 Well, during the orientation, I shared with uh, the new council members uh, the type of service that we provide, the savings that we have generated over the year, and so on and so forth. During that presentation, I also uh, reported that uh, council members can uh, request an audit or investigation. Uh, however, I didn't. What I didn't share with them is the process by which you request an audit or investigation. Again, the court form that uh, uh, she was talking about, there are last two bullets which were marked with note B. Uh, this is the form you use and those are the boxes you check out. And uh, basically, I mean, uh, this form needs to be signed by the council members in the audit committee the two council member uh, on the audit committee. And once we get the action um, and request, we open up either investigation or uh, audit as necessary. Uh, again, I mean, uh, and this, these are regarding audit and investigations. However, uh, currently they, they are no process um, and actually the documented process where a council member needs to come and visit the city auditor's office and consult with city auditor. Um, and again, I mean, that is something that uh, uh, the previous council started looking at it and uh, nothing has been done on that. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that issue on the table. Thank you, Mr. DeWolf. Other questions for Mr. DeWolf? Is there an appeal process if, Mr. President? Yes. Um, is there an appeal process if for some reason there is a request put in for an investigation or an audit that, if I'm understanding you correctly, if a request is made and the two members of the audit committee signs off on those, um, then you can proceed? Yes. Is there any way that the council can overrule that? Uh, again, that will depend upon the, the work. The, the ordinance says if either of the either or both of the two members of the audit committee uh, decline to approve, then uh, on a motion, simple motion, five votes, the council as a as a group can uh, call for the audit. Mm -hmm. I think her question. Follow up. Um, my question is, if the two audit members approve, can council overrule that? The, as I recall, it was a silent issue. Um, silent. And so the short answer would probably go back to the basic uh, employment relationship between the council and the auditor. And if the employer directs the employee to do or not to do uh, certain things, then it's so your answer is that there is the is solemn as it relates to if council disagree with the request even though the two members on the audit approves that is silent as to whether or not the council has can overrule that the ordinance itself is silent Okay. But again, uh, the auditor works through. Okay. Works Thank for you. the council. Okay. Thank you. I think Chris may have had a question, and then Mr. Angelos. I do. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> Excuse me. Silence is a concept here. The, the <laughs> charter, or in the all of Commonwealth, is not is disapproval. Is that would that be a good concept? To, when I when unless I say explicitly it. stated, you don't have that authority. But this is an ordinance, not state law. Right. Yeah, the, the, the ordinance that deals with the two members of the audit committee is strictly an ordinance adopted by the city. There's nothing in state law that requires it. Uh, there's nothing in state law, uh, probably there's nothing in state law that even addresses it. Uh, it is simply a practice that you have adopted uh, as a council and that you've put into the form of an ordinance. 
Oh, there's nothing to prevent us from amending that ordinance now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Rogers. Um, when we, we thought the school board requested that we amend the ordinance, we process at this stage. But as a new council member, we've taken somebody else's seat. What happens to their request that has not gone through completion and they're no longer a council member? Well, do they get tabled? Do they need a new patron? What's the process that we need for those? Let's start with the easy, the, the obvious part that you didn't ask. If there's already been a paper yes. introduced by a former council person, that paper survives. Probably it would be nice if there were new patrons added to it, but if, if in the most recent council elections, if uh, Mr. Tyler, Mr. Connor, or Mr. Jewell had proposed something, it had been introduced but hadn't been voted on yet, that paper is still alive. Um, it'd be nice to have new patrons, but it is not necessary. To your point, hopefully I've stalled long enough for Alan to have thought about this. <laughs> um, if the legislation has not been introduced, and if the patron was a former member, then it is of no effect. Now, I don't know if you even have any, uh, any pending requests that we are not acted on. Yeah, we do have a few in the card. I don't know how many, but we, we do have some where Ms. the members are no longer. They, they would require new patrons. Okay. And there would be nothing that would preclude a new council member from reviewing those and right. determining whether or not those were still something or that. For anybody. Well, certainly. For anybody, but for, for anybody, but certainly <coughs> if you're specifically about uh, council persons who uh, are no longer here, but certainly for anyone to review <laughs> and determine, <laughs> yes, and determine whether or not those should go forward. Ms. Graziano? Yeah, I was just thinking that it might be helpful if we just had everybody on council got a list of what's in the car. Mm -hmm. that is presently this not in the paper and see if anybody wants to pick it up. Mm -hmm. what, what I'd recommend is we, we do that. I'd almost be tempted to say that in the immediate, once it's compiled, send it to our three new council members as it was their predecessors that were championing those causes. If they have no interest in moving forward with them, send it to the rest of council. That way it gives you guys first bite of the apple. Is that acceptable to folks in general theory, or do you want to just send out to everybody at once? Everybody at once? I see a consensus on that. Yeah. All right. Um, the deputy is saying we believe the only thing that's still in there that's outstanding would have come from the ninth district. But we'll, we'll um, confirm that. Okay. Okay. Up next. Unless there is any other questions for Mr. DeLaw. Seeing none. Oh. I was saying that was helpful. Oh, yes, that was helpful. Thank you. Yes. Mr. President, one thing, one issue I would like to bring back to the table that you mentioned um, there had been some previous concerns as it relates to different council members going individually to the, stir, to the auditor, I mean, to the, yeah, to the auditor mm -hmm. asking. Um, for a specific action to be taken that seemed to have been somewhat problematic. And there were, this, there we, we have had some discussion as it relates to that. But I think it brings it back to the whole um, issue that uh, Mr. Jackson mentioned earlier in relationship to each one of our appointed department heads that any council member can go to them and ask them to or order them to do something. I mean, that was pretty strong. Um, and so I, I, I don't know whether or not that that is an issue that uh, certainly not nothing that I want to discuss or resolve today, but it certainly had been previously an issue. And so I would think that if we were, were proactive, we perhaps would prevent something that has happened in the past. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Dahl, thank you very much. We'll move forward now to Mr. Anderson and the city clerk.